desire to eat, then, then this term becomes more than that. Yeah, so, so this is like a field theory. I mean, I mean it's like, like the, the, top, the, 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 the group, number of degree of freedom law is, is like the same thing in other cases. The number of degree of freedom translates into a coupling constant in the field theory, where, where when the, when the coordinate is large, the field theory is like in the low temperature or in the, in the top of the image. So that, so that in the gravitational theory, it's like the coordinate one or two million, which is also like proportional to some power of the one. So when you enlarge it, so it's very similar to that, except that here we only talk about space. So this theory only deals with space, so it's like a gravity theory. Uh, any more questions? Okay, so uh, so so uh, once you uh, use this technique to study the random average properties, you can study many more things. Uh, than just the, the, the uh, two type dynamic formula. So uh, I, I will just briefly sketch a few of them because I want to talk about the newer thing about the fluctuation geometry. Um, so let's take an example. So I mentioned last time that when you have a geometry, then there's a minimal surface, then, uh, then you can consider quantum flat, uh, you can consider quantum spread to this formula, but not in terms of like the geometry spread. Particles in the upper region of And in terms of network language, what, what does that mean? That means I, I have a network, uh, let me draw a network. Uh, I have a network, some, something like that, whatever. And, and then uh, now this represents a state. But uh, uh, in, in addition, uh, in addition, I can have degree of freedom view in the box, um, say somewhere here, here. And then I can. Uh, I can put uh, some additional entanglement in this uh, box region. So say I have uh, some state of the field physics in the internal state. And then now oh, this is a new state on the boundary. And, and uh, of course, this, uh, to, make, to make this picture make sense, you, 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 you think that this red line is much thinner than the white line. So this is uh, like a small region. So now if I, I calculate the entanglement of this region, Surface, and then uh, you can directly apply the same technique because the whole thing, this thing is basically like like I'm, I'm modifying the set. So instead of having just some PR pairs across this white thing, in addition to that, I have some lines here which are connected to a space here, which I don't know what is, I don't need to specify, I don't know what is that space. It's just whatever space. Uh, let me call it by B. So this is like, like this part is like the leading part that gives you most of the entanglement and gives very simple form. And this part is, is, is whatever say you have, but it's, it's uh, hidden in the box. So so then all the whole calculation applies and fails here. Because I didn't use anything about the spectral property of those. So so you can input any state and then impose the random projection, and then the entry will be uh, the this uh, mass f will be a sum over the uh, will be a, a, a continuous function, and then the only difference here is now if I modify this as p, then the entropy doesn't have this simple uh, form anymore. So that means your action action gets a new term, and because this is just about absolute, so I so just add a new term. So the action action is uh, the original one, which is that that term there, plus a, a pervariant term. The pervariant term is just the second degree entropy of this box state. Uh, in the regime where everything is done. So now if you take the limit where like there is log D is very large and this term stays finite, like like this box 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 may stay finite, so the entropy here does not grow. But this uh, this this inflating all grows. Then in that limit of the minimal surface position, the, the dominant concentration is still determined by by this term. So so this is like a like a small term. Get the same minimal surface on my A, and, and this is the spin bundle A. This is exactly the internal plane of A. And, and in that case, the collinear function will be just uh, the same um, 
this uh, case, we naturally get uh, this sum uh, bracket term for the Zuhari-Lani popular, uh, which was uh, also uh, obtained in the gravitational uh, in the whole gravitational duality. So, so here, uh, and, and also, I feel like this is a, I mean, the nice thing is in the framework of the network, uh, geometry and the matter is really not separate. And the geometrical contribution, which we really, we, when we read the Rupai and Ali formula, there is, a, there is a geometry part. There is a geometry part in this. Then the quantum brackets are like the contribution from the box planar field in this regime here. And in the holography, the, the theoretic derivation, these are these two things have a separate derivation. This is really in common, actually. But this is, in, in the gravity theory, this is not in common, actually. This is just a, an area. But uh, in the Pentagon network, they are both in common, actually. So, so actually, there is no like sharp separation of the two. Here, here, this result is also only true in, in the limit where gravity is large. Otherwise, it's a sum over. It's a sum over different domain theory. So this, so, so there is also like a Dumbleton theory. There. there is a, a limit where uh, the IT model coupling, the uh, coupling, that coupling of the IT model is large. So, so it's similar. It's like the, I take a if I if I think then, then I, I'm in the limit where it doesn't collaborate, then it takes a log and it decomposes. And then there is this, uh, this quantum field living on top of that. Yeah, but, uh, but, but the fact that the whole thing comes from the common attribute of a space, that tells me, for example, like in, in the holography, we know if you change the cutoff of that matter field, you, you, you can correct the Einstein, uh, you can correct that, the, the King Newton. Right? So, so, so the, the separation of these two parts is not so, uh, it's not so important. I mean, I mean it's, it's not like it's not a very special case. Here it's uh, very natural because it's, it's uh, the whole thing is just a space. And the geometry itself, the geometry contribution itself comes from a quantum space. And, uh, and and this tells you this example tells you how to improve the quality of your freedom. And then you can ask a more complicated question, like uh, like you have when you have a geometry, you have some some network, some geometry, and then uh, you can leave the bag open, and instead of inputting some particular state, you can ask about the linear map you get by inputting general states here. Like I ask, okay, if I if I input whatever states here, and that map to some state on the boundary, this is like a linear map. So so uh, you can ask about the properties of this map. So that tells me that tells me like what what kind of operator here in the box maps to on the boundary, and then you can study like the local reconstruction properties. Show that this operator can be reconstructed on part of the boundary without knowing the completion of the boundary, without knowing the completion of the boundary. So, so all these things can be studied in the same way. Because you can always view the network, the whole network as a space of the box and the boundary, and then study some incumbent properties. So I, I won't go through uh, these uh, more details, but you can, but these are all in this paper last year. We can. So yeah, when you talk about this, the pattern network is really true, and it could be embedded uh, uh, think about a general graph. I don't think about it in the end. So the general graph is how far how can you define it to so for a minimal surface? Well it's a minimal number of units you cut. Like like this is the boundary regime. And then I find a line that separates this from the, the complement. And then I just find the place where the, the cut is sharp. So so the yeah, so the area is defined as as the, the minimal number of units. in the Einstein language is just as a minimal area from the So every, everything is, is really in the graph theory level, it's not the knowledge of the minimum. Okay, so uh, 
uh, maybe I will use the, the remaining uh, time to describe how, the, how I want to generalize this uh, to, to include the flagging job. So, so uh, basically, you can uh, think, let's say, before I introduce the job to the think about this as a way to uh, have a state for some e geometry, uh, geometry in the graph. So for each graph, I give you a common state. And the common state has properties like the R property. So uh, now you need you would like to ask, uh, I mean if I want to say this 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 graph this uh, this uh, states are useful to describe the boundary field, then uh, there are there are two kind of uh, two related questions. Is it, is this state uh, over complete basis or all complete basis? Like like if I consider all possible graphs. Then each graph corresponds to a state. Then each, each graph does correspond to a given number of vertices. I can connect them in different ways, and each, each way of connection gives me a kind of network state. A different connection can give me a different state. Of state. So, so then there's each graph corresponds to a state uh, with a kind of network. So the question is. Is this a complete basis? If, if this is a complete basis, then uh, then I can use them to map the boundary state to the dot. Like the general boundary state can be expected in these spaces, and it, it's, it's a, it becomes a sum over a given geometry. And, the, and then the complement question is: uh, Is this basis complete or over complete? If, if it is, a, if it if indeed it can describe all the states in the boundary, is it over complete? Because we, we want a framework that can include all the states in the boundary. Like the geometry is supposed to be between all states and all states. Although not every state is mapped to some classical geometry, but it, it should be mapped generally to pure continuous geometry. So, so to answer this, uh, yeah, if you think about the other two graphs, there's no 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 geometry like that. Yeah. But in the ADSTSP reality, they uh, they amplify the boundary like that. So so hopefully. Hopefully, what happens is uh, like uh, for a given boundary state, we expand it in different graphs. Then we find the dominant one, which is the one with one higher dimension. But I, I don't, I don't know. Okay, but even in the boundary, the dimensionality might not be such a wide uh, enough because it's it's a new algorithm. Well, I, I want to build a basis to describe boundary fields, so that will not that because it's a basis of this other state, so it will not have not any knowledge about whether the boundary theory is local. I can give you a narrow process on the boundary, which is mapped to something in the box that's very yeah, yeah. So, 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 so in this sense, there's even no other kind of dimensionality on the boundary. Uh, it's it's when, really not narrow. When I discuss this, yeah, I don't need to assume the boundary. Yeah, I don't need to assume the dimension of the boundary. So if you use the 1D state, you should automatically, the state is should tell me, tell me that the graph that gives me the correct description is 2D. Uh, and if I input a 3D state, it should tell me the graph is not. So, the process is not really close to any Actually, graph theory sometimes really has a dimension, a so called definition of the dimension. So some location, some kind of good graph, and you have a sense of relation. Yeah, you have a hot dog dimension. Yeah, but it's usually this graph that are in some completely random graph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a graph that was. So, I mean, I'm aware that in previous.
So let me uh, describe what I, like how I, I want to disclose all the all the graph. So so basically the way I want to do it is I want to include the input variable. So so I, I want to draw a complete graph. Let's let's say this is a complete graph. So so I want to draw a complete graph by connecting every input variable or given number of vertices. Say the number of vertices is the boundary V B, which is three here. Zero is entangled, and the entanglement grows until until it's maximal for a period for a period of time. So you see, like in this way, I I can put all the graphs as as uh, as just different inputs in A. And in the simplest case, if you think there is only two 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 possibilities, A is a two, then all the all the links with A equals zero is disconnected. All the links with A equals one is connected. So like this graph will correspond to a is one uh, on these four links, on, on these links, and then all others are zero. And this one corresponds to a different conjugate. So, so it's, it's convenient. So it's really just you just draw one tangent arrow with some soft inputs, and and uh, now on a complete graph. So for x for any x y uh, that are on this pole, then there is an a. So when you divide by all these a's, this defines the state in the box. And then I just project, I just impose this onset projection to map that state to a uh, state on the boundary. So, so the state, uh, so uh, the state on the boundary corresponds to corresponds to a particular a. Is a random projection. So the so <clears throat> we do this because now now uh, once we translate this uh, this uh, geometry to a link variable, then uh, then we, we can put all the, the different uh, geometries on the same in, in the same uh, uh, framework. So we can study their overlap. We can ask this question whether they are uh, whether they are they are. Uh, So yeah, basically I'm going to mention only the mainly just mention the result. So 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 this uh, definition of this complete graph. So let me schematically draw something. Uh, so so this basically this is this complete graph with with uh, because it's a complete graph, so all the vertices actually are equivalent. But here there are there are two kinds of vertices. One vertice one kind of vertices has some connection to the outside, and then some some other. So this graph is classified by the two members, the number of vertices connect to the boundary and those no different kind of bonds. Once you specify these two members, you define this mapping. And then uh, then this mapping is map is a linear map from these link variables to the boundary. So if I want to uh, study whether this is a over complete or complete basis of the boundary, uh, what I want is um, we want to, to we want okay we want a situation where there is an isometry from the boundary states to the box. If that's true, then that means we can map all the boundary states 
with preserving the norm at the to the bounds. So so any state in the boundary becomes a superposition of this of the group. And that actually can be translated into a entanglement question. So let me course doing this. Calculation is a uh, um, is, is very simple. Basically, you just take this and trace up, take this and this dagger and trace out the law. And then you, you get a density matrix of the boundary, and you just want to calculate the entropy and see whether it's actually matrix. So 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 after you take this and the, and the dagger and then the box line, what you get is just something like at every line. Every gene, I get a density matrix of that gene. Density matrix is obtained by tracing out that data. So you have a, a mixed state across every gene. And then you do the random regression, you will trace it as before, so this is a complete graph. And then you want to calculate the entire entity of the whole boundary. So now this is exactly the same kind of acting model problem, except that your box state is now a mixed state. And you are on a complete graph. You can make it simpler, simpler with the acting model on complete graph. So, so actually you can uh, you, you map this into an acting model problem so that the trace of the whole of the boundary, right? That's the, that's the thing you want to calculate. And, and you want to show that I mean this condition is this is maximally mixed, which means we want we want this to be one over the dimension of the boundary. And, uh, and this, is, uh, this is basically an acting model problem. Where this acting model is on the complete graph, experiment matrix, and then there is a, a, there is a, a overall field. applied to every side, that's a constant of the fact that this is a mixed state. So that in that case, it's a pure state. So anything in, inside the green down domain do not contribute because you are calculating the entropy of the whole thing. But here, they contribute because they, they, they didn't have an entropy. So, so actually, so this, this thing is like up for every thing. So, so basically, this, uh, uh, this calculation, and then there's a boundary, there's a boundary scheme. So basically, this, this is like a complete graph, and then you have an external field that's going up everywhere, and then there is an internal field going down on the other boundary. Because I'm calculating the boundary entity, so there's a external field going down. So, so you, you just want to see which, which like the, the feeding field in the box tries to make the thing up, and the boundary feeding field tries to make the thing down. And then the situation where the internal entity is maximum is where the box field the box has more degrees, so you have a box field with this, and then the acting screen is pointing up everywhere. Then this whole wall is like this, and that gives you the maximum. So, so okay, so I won't go to more details, but basically, using this, you can write down some uh, um, some conditions for a uh, So, um, I'm not sure if that if it would be important to write down the saying 
that that uh, you need a you need a enough number of users that you can adopt, and and you need this space to be really expensive. So that there is a is there a minimum that you have to do. So actually, this conditions are very easy to satisfy. As you see, the degree of freedom in the box goes to actually this square, and the boundary goes like this. So so if you have a lot of vertices, these are actually both of them are very easy to satisfy. So, so this is proof that that uh, if you have a lot of vertices, uh, just have enough number of vertices, then the space corresponds to all the geometry. And in this case, the geometry is weighted because A has value that's not only 0, 1, but it's small value. You can think of this as a weighted geometry. So the weighted geometry corresponds to uh, a lot of these weights. So that, so that means every space on the boundary Like there is an isometric function here to here, which which 
probably am allowed to talk about any set of boundaries as soon as you have geometry. And then there's an assumption behind the assumption is from the box of the boundary, which tells me that around a classical geometry, the small flat regions are indeed physical. Uh, they are physically, they are physically orthogonal plane on the boundary. That is nice to talk about. That's the exact one. So that's only really true. Yeah, so, so, so this, for each class of geometry, there is a subgroup. And for a different geometry, there is a different subgroup. But then there is the last point I want to mention. I'm sorry. So the last point is you want to say these are indeed the different things. Like the different geometry, as we saw, they are almost related. So they are not really completely different things. But you want to show at least they are almost different. But otherwise, like the criterion here and here around the two completely different geometries may be actually the same physical thing. That, that's not, that means the so, so the, the, the last thing I want to mention is if you take two different geometries, which are macroscopically different, like one with a black hole, one without, then you calculate the overlap. Then we, we don't know how to calculate the overlap, but we know how to calculate the average. Then the average of the overlap has a very nice simple form. Uh, then we only write in the larger limit, which in the limit where the top is large, so that the end model is in the larger limit, is sigma phi. Thank you. 